In this video, I'll be sharing the apps I have on my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, my favorite launcher, all of my customizations, the settings I use to preserve battery health, and everything you need to know about the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Hi, I'm Captain Awesome. This is Geekception, and I'll really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe as it really helps me here. I also have memberships in case you want to stick around as that would really go a long way. Now, this home screen I'm using right here, or rather the home screen wallpaper I'm using is actually AI generated. Now, Oh. Samsung mentioned many AI uh, tools in their keynote, but one of the things they did not actually mention is the fact that you can actually generate AI wallpaper. So you go into wallpaper and style right there. And if you go into change wallpaper right here, you can actually scroll down, go to creative. And if you click on creative, you can see here, there's a generative um, section here. So if I tap on that generative, this is the one I have here that I'm using right now, but you can actually look at other, sorry, I just hit back there. Can actually look at other ones there. So these are like, some of the basic ones there but if you scroll down you can actually create a new one so let's say if i click on night for example you can see here it has this prompts here which is abstract gray distant mountain with ice so if i say if you tap on it you can already see this uh, it gives you different options here so um let's say gray let's change it to blue um let's change the distant mountain range to a cliff and let's change ice to flowers. And if you click generate right here, it will actually take a little bit of time, but it will generate a wallpaper for you, which is super cool. I mean, they did not mention this, but yes, it is now done. And as you can see, it gives you different styles. So you get the first style here, you get the second style, you get the third style and the fourth style right there. So that is actually what I use. And if we go back, there's actually a little Easter egg if, in case you did not notice. So on the home screen, if you look at the bottom left right here, you can actually see the generative AI um, uh, watermark there, which is on every single thing that this phone uses to generate AI or anything it uses AI for, it would have that mark there in case you did not know. And since we are still on the home screen, another customization I've done is, you know, you have the regular swipe down and it will give you your notifications. But if I swipe from the right actually here, it will actually give me the full control center, which is really nice. So how to enable that is, if you go into the settings, well, not that setting. If you, let's say we go back to the home screen, you click on this uh, tiny edit button here. We click on that edit button. And if we're going to click quick settings, instant access, you can see here that if we toggle this on, which I already have on, uh, you're able to pull down from the right corner and it will give you your full um, notification slash control center right there, which I think just makes it much more easier to get to the extended settings. And my philosophy is very, very simple. I have my favorite at the bottom here, which I've been able to customize to include five apps. I have the search bar here and my social apps first at the first row, and then my social creation apps such as Lightroom, LumaFusion, which in my opinion is the best video editor app ever on mobile and CapCut, you know, for understanding and seeing all the latest trends in the videos. Uh, my notes app, which is what I used to like take all of my notes down with the S Pen, which I will get to in a while. And also my YouTube studio app, which I can use to keep track of all of my YouTube studio. And now on the first uh, place here, I have this widget, which is a search widget. Well, it's a at a glance widget by Google, uh, but it's a stack, which means that um, with uh, one UI, you can actually stack widgets on top of each other. And it's that simple as you know just pressing and holding and you can enable a stack and here I've already enabled the stack and the last one I have is like a photo gallery so I can be able to keep it very clean by just having this um, search uh, at a glance here or I can just you know go to my notion so that I can see all my pending tasks or I can be able to see like my gallery app. Now moving on to the next page here and I have my Apple Music, you know, I am hashtag team Apple Music right here. So I can be able to see my recently played uh, music and going top to bottom here. Um, the first row here is just sort of like for social kind of the uh, apps, which is Notion, Kindle, Press Reader for reading magazines. Um, the next one is just utilities. So fast to be able to um, see um, my fast internet speed on the go. I have 5G, so I'm always looking for what is the speed at the moment. I'm not sure if it's just me or if I'm just obsessed with finding out my speed always. Um, headphones to be able to connect my Sony uh, earbuds, uh, Google Play Store, voice recorder which also is AI enabled I have used it a little bit here and there but um, I was not quite satisfied with it like here I used it to transcribe the audio um, 
not the best, I would say, but, you know, definitely I think maybe it's just an accent thing because, you know, here in Malaysia, maybe it cannot pick up the accent properly. Uh, the next row here is just my uh, entertainment app. So Streamio, uh, Apple Music, Boost for Reddit, Treads, and YouTube. So pretty much that is it, but that is not the exciting part. This uh, third uh, home screen here is the most exciting part of it, which I will be coming to in a while. Next, let's talk about the lock screen. And now if we're going to the lock screen right here, just going to double tap to open it. Um, we are on the lock screen. If you press and hold FYI, it will give you the options to be able to customize your lock screen. And if you tap on, let's say the clock right here, you can actually be able to customize it. And you know, just like, you know, a certain a fruit company, they have the ability for you to change the, you know, the clock uh, theme here. But unlike the fruit company, for example, um, you cannot actually like change the size, which, you know, I love that I can just have this big clock here or you can even change the style as well. So you can have it in like different styles right here. You can have it as an analog clock. You can have it, you know, justified to the left or to the right. I always like having it like very big. And you can also, of course, change all the other widgets here, which are customizable, which I have the battery uh, indicator there and the uh, my step counter every single day there. But that is not the cool thing here. Now, the cool thing here is that you Usually the apps at the bottom here, if you look at your own phone, they are different from what I have here. Maybe the camera is the same here because you're, you know, you have the camera as a default. But on the left here is actually by default the phone app. But what I've been able to do is if you tap on it, you can actually change it to any app that you want. And so for me, I have changed it to the expert raw so I can get into shooting raw, which is, you know, the most flexible image format here on the phone on the S24 Ultra right there. So in case you did not know, you can actually change these shortcuts at the bottom there uh, on the lock screen. And if you click done right there, you're done. You're able to apply all of the changes to your lock screen. I promised it to you and I'm delivering it to you right now. Customizations. How have I been able to customize this? Again, it's very minimal. You don't notice it, which is my philosophy here. But this home screen is highly customized and it starts with OMOP, which is one of the apps that you exactly this page I promised to show you, which is the Good Lock. So Good Lock is an app you can install on the Galaxy Store. And if you, in case you don't know, Galaxy Store comes pre-installed with your phone. So you just go into your hub drawer by swipe, by sliding up right there, going, looking for store, opening it, searching for Good Lock, and you'll be able to install Good Lock in case you do not have it. If you have Good Lock and you open Good Lock, you can actually um, search for OMAP, which will be in the options right here, or in my case, I've already installed it. So now if I go back into to my home screen and I click home up. Why am I telling you about this? Well, there are a few customizations that have been used here that I think has been life changing for using the default launcher here on the phone. So let's start with home up, which if I open it right here, and I go into home screen, you can see that I have actually changed the grid to a five by seven and the app screen to a five by six, which means that I can be able to fit way more um, apps on the home screen here. But I think the default home screen settings should be able to change that, which in case you do not know, to get to the default home screen settings, you press and hold on your home screen right here. You go into settings at, uh, below there and you should be able to see your home screen grid right there. So yes, this is where you are able to like change your home screen grids. I'm not gonna change it, I don't wanna mess it all up. So that is not special, but if we go back into home up here, what is special though is the ability to increase your favorite max count. So your favorites are the apps that are below here. And as you can see, I have increased it to five. I think by default it is four, or even if it's not four by default, uh, you can actually like increase it even more like seven or eight apps right there. So I have it to five, which has been life changing for me to be able to just have all of my favorite apps there in the favorites. Going back into home up right here and folder. And one thing I did is to change the pop-up folder. So which meant that if I turn this off, right, and then we go into a folder that I have here, let's say Malaysia, right? Uh, and I click on it, you would see that it takes the entire screen. I do not like that. I do not like that it takes the entire screen. Sometimes I have to tap outside, you know, it, it's very clunky. I don't like it. So going back into the OMOP app right here. So I'm just going to open OMOP back and go into folder. And if you click on pop-up folder, one thing that is super cool here is that it will actually change it so that it's just a pop-up there. It will not take up the entire screen, which has been super nice. So I don't have to like, you know, it doesn't have to consume so much real estate. Another customization that you may have missed just now is 
my task changer. And as you can see, I have this mini task changer here and it looks very different from like the default one. And just like I did just now, let me go into the task uh, uh, home up here and let me turn this off so you can see how it looks by default. So this is the default task changer right there. It's very big, you have to reach your hand up. And in case you've not noticed, this is a very big phone. So what I did is if you in home up, you can enable the task changer there and to get there, you know, under home up, you go into task changer there you tap on it and you can actually customize it so i have customized it to a stack and i've selected the mini mode so you have other different modes as well so if you're going to list for example uh, i think this is the default list so if i open it there you can see uh, wait i still have the mini mode here okay if i turn it on you can see like it it's the same default one if i go into grid now we are starting to get into iPad territory. This just looks like an iPad to me. Um, this is uh, what I call the iPad mode. If I go back into home up here and I click on stack, which is what I had just now, you can see stack, which also sort of vaguely resembles the iPhone as well. Um, if you're going to vertical list, now this is where you're getting into unique territory, right? And this looks like very different, right? It looks it looks very nice. Um, I just didn't dig it because I have to scroll vertically. Um, that's just not my jam. And the last one, just to make it all complete, is a slim list where it puts all of your apps without the sort of thumbnail and it's just like a list all there. I'm a very visual person, so you know that's definitely not for me. But the one I found that I like is a stack that I like sorry is a stack and the mini mode where if I put it like that it's very small I can be able to like use like one my one thumb to be able to for example use my thumb like that and tap like that very easy for me to navigate or put like this and then navigate like that okay so probably not the best example but yes that's why I love uh, you know home up to be able to change this home settings and task changer settings another customization i've used here is my keyboard now if i open my keyboard for you right here so let's say i type a word and you can see my keyboard first of all maybe might look like the default one but wait until i start typing right so let's say if i start typing now you can actually see it looks very different and you know when i switch let's say i'm like this is my keyboard you can see it has like this nice glowy effect there so how did i get like this keyboard right and it also has a number row so i don't have to switch to get a number row as well and you can see this nice themes well my good old friend good luck so we shall go back into good luck right here and good luck has two tabs it has the life up tab and the makeup tab and so far i've only showed you um, the life up tab here so i'm just going to go into the, the makeup tab and you would install keys cafe which is one of the apps here so i've already installed it which is why you have it here so when it launches keys cafe here um you're actually able to make your own keyboard now for me i opened it but it was a bit too overwhelming i'm not going to lie i just did not but what i did was i cho chose the second option which is to style your own keyboard so now to style your own keyboard here you can see it actually gives you different styles of keyboards right here and um, not only the different styles of keyboard i already have my own style that i've chosen here but you also have effects so you can actually choose the different kind of effect you want when you press keys for example the effects that i have for the motion effect so when you tap on the keyboard for example so if i bring up the keyboard you can see how it's going to change right there you can see that animation so it actually changes depending on the effect that you choose right here so this is why i like it and this is the second customization here from the good luck app which is keys cafe you're able to customize the keyboard to whatever it is you want the next customization i have here is the volume. So if I press on the volume right here, you can actually see my volume. Look at that. It actually shimmers from top to bottom. And if I scroll down like that, it actually shimmers from bottom to top back again. So how do you get this? Well, our good old friend, good luck. That is where we're going to go in there. Um, we're going to go to sound assistant right here, which is another of the apps you're going to install. Again, literally, like if you do not have good luck, you really need it. It's like the best app to customize your Galaxy device, not only the S24 Ultra, but pretty much almost any Galaxy device as well. So after you've installed it, well, this is camera assistant, uh, sound assistant, um, you can actually 
go on this setting here, which is the first one, which is just customize, um, sorry, the second one, make your own volume panel colors. And you know, if I turn it off here, you can actually see this is the default, very boring, who, boo, who cares about that? You turn it on and yeah, look at that. You've glammed it up. Your keyboard is new and you have different lighting styles right here, right? Like you can really go crazy. Like if you're a fan of Chrome, you can really, really go crazy. And I do not mean the browser. And you can even change the texture from mesh extra acrylic you can change your control type so it's a knob so instead of like a bar you can actually like look at that and it actually has like vibration feedback as well as i change it like it actually like vibrates um i, I prefer the bar um you can change the shape as well you can make it wider you can make it thinner um i kind of like it thinner because wider is like it's going to take off too much like screen estate right here so i like it like very 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 thin but yes this is how you're able to use sound sorry uh sound assistant to be able to customize your your volume and you know you obviously have so many more options here that I could go into for me I just found it like too overwhelming and one of the options here which I might make in like a maybe short video is a voice changer so you can actually like change your voice right so let's say um, if I record my voice like this right now um, and let's say I play that back um, if I record my voice like this right now um, if I record my voice like this right now um, if I record my voice like this right now. That's a TikTok one. Like you see that you can actually like change your voice inbuilt here with the sound assistant app. And I think this should be able to carry on into like your voice memos and stuff. Super cool stuff. I don't use it, but you might find it useful, especially, you know, for Goofy or even like for me, I make TikToks. This might be nice and come in handy as well. So that is sound assistant. Okay, the last customization here is not really a customization per se. It's just being able to change many settings at once. And that is with the modes and routines. So modes and routines basically uh, gives you the ability to be able to, for example, you know, sleep mode, right? Where, you know, your phone goes to sleep. Um, well, when it's in sleep mode, it silences your phone, puts on do not disturb like I have right here until like I think 10 a.m. in the morning and you're able to like, you know, let's say silence your phone and all of that, which is cool. I think almost every phone has it. But what is really nice about this is that you can actually customize your uh, mode here depending on the app you open and all of that. It can really, really get um, uh, detailed. So here you have modes and routines, right? So uh, routines, for example, here I have one set for auto rotate. So for example, example, if um, you see here, you have a condition where if an app is open or several apps are open, which in my case is the camera app, the gallery app, my camera app, another camera app, and my Google Photos, uh, it is then going to auto rotate. So by default, I always have the rotation turned off because I, I hate like, you know, when uh, the phone just continuously rotates on me without like, I don't like it. I always turn it off. But when I'm in these certain apps, I actually want it to rotate. Like, you know, in my camera app or in my gallery app, when I'm viewing a photo, I actually need the rotation, right? Or I, I want the rotation. So whenever, you know, whatever happens, like I open uh, the app, it triggers this automation and then it's able to like actually switch the rotation. And then you see when the routine ends right here, it will actually return it to the previous status. Okay, so let's test it out, okay? So first I will go back here here I will open uh, my gallery app right here and I have this photo here which normally I would have to you know rotate it but if we go into the settings here you can actually see it has already turned on the rotation and now I can like you know rotate it and it will rotate right there and you know it will rotate back when I rotate but when I exit the app and I go check my rotation right there boom it turns it off as you could see on camera right there so very nice you don't have to continuously do it yourself so just think of modes and routine as an automation thing. And what is really cool is that, you know, this is just routines. I have a mode, which is the filming mode right here. So whenever I'm filming, which is what I'm doing right now, I've already, you know, selected some action. So when I tap on it, which is why I have it on the home screen right here. So when I tap on that, it will run several actions. And some of the actions here are when I let, like, let me just quickly go back into modes and routines right there. So what it's going to do is it's going to change my font size to large. Um, it's going to make sure that the phone does not automatically lock. It will set the screen timeout to 10 minutes. So of course the phone stays open and it will set my brightness to 29%, which I found to be the sweet spot between where I'm able to show you what is on my screen without it being too bright. And so you cannot see it, right? So now I already have it on, which is why um, I just turn it off. So if I open my Twitter, for example, now you can see the font size just became small. But if I 
go into my automation, my filming automation here, and I turn it on, and I go back into my Twitter, now suddenly you see the text is really big and it's much more easier for me to show you stuff on my screen. And so yes, the modes and routines app here is really powerful. You can really go crazy with some of the routines here. And I would really suggest like, if you have this phone or even just another uh, Galaxy phone, um, you check it out to see all the possibilities that exist here on the phone. Next, let's go into the settings and I will share some of my favorite settings with you, starting with my display mode. Now, the display mode I, I have here is the adaptive mode, which is, you know, making sure that the phone is always smooth. So for example, if you're going to something like Twitter and you scroll, you can actually see like how fast that is. Of course, this is limited by the frame rate I'm uploading to YouTube right now, but it is way more smoother here in person. So I make sure that, that I've turned on adaptive mode there. And of course, because I have my uh, automation running for my filming thing, all the text is big, but usually I have my text like really super small. Um, I think that is the best way to go. I, I really like, you know, seeing everything tiny there. And my screen mode, I've selected natural. And of course, there's been some complaints about how this phone is not vivid enough. And, um, you know, the gag is when I actually select vivid, I think it's a bit too vivid. So, you know, I tend to go for the more natural one. And because, you know, I'm used to to editing videos and I'm used to using color accurate displays. Um, the natural might be a bit too undersaturated, but it's because it's actually very color accurate. So usually when you use a color accurate monitor, it's not very overly saturated and maybe to the normal eye, it doesn't seem like that. But if you edit like I do, for example, in Lightroom, and I think this is a photo, um, I'm trying to look for a raw photo I actually took here. Um, yes, so I, I, this is a photo I actually took on the S24 Ultra, which is a raw photo, which I edited. And as you can see, it, fe it feels very flat, but then I'm able to edit it. But that's because, you know, this screen is actually very nicely color calibrated. So I can trust that whatever colors I see here are very accurate. Uh, but that may not be your cup of tea. And if that is not the case, you can always switch to vivid under the settings right here. Now, this is just aesthetics, but the most important thing is how to preserve your battery health, right? Especially since this phone is promised seven years of software updates. So if you're planning to use this phone for seven years, and I salute you if you're using it for seven years, I'm going to watch this video back seven years from now and see whoever comments that they're still using this in like, what, 2031 or something. Well, you're going to want to preserve your battery health, and it's very easy to do that, actually. So under the settings right here, um, we will look for the battery settings which I'm going to find here. And basically what you want to do is you want to limit your battery charging so it does not charge up to 100% all the time, which in case you do not know, is not good for your battery at all. And uh, you know, if you're like me, um, you want to preserve your battery health, but you don't want to worry about switching it manually all the time, I got you, I got you. So here under the battery settings, you already see I have battery protection on and I have it at maximum. So you have several settings here and let's break it down, okay? So the first one is basic where your phone just charges to 100%. Um, you know, it will, you know, drop down to 95% again and then charge it back to 100%. So it does not keep your battery at 100% permanently, especially if you like to use your phone plugged in. I would not really suggest this. Um, adaptive, in case you do not want to go maximum like I am, is what I would suggest for a good middle ground. So I would say adaptive here is where, you know, your, your, your phone will be able to, you know, switch to charging it slower when you plug it in all night and then it will charge it to 100 right when you're about to use your phone. So that, you know, sort of is a good middle ground. But if you're like me and you want to preserve your battery health to the maximum, well, Maximum. Uh, here you will be able to stop, uh, the battery will stop charging when it reaches 80%, which means that it will not hit that upper echelon of 100% all the time. So, you know, what causes wear and tear in these batteries is you know, charging it to 100% or depleting it to 0%. So, you want to make sure that you don't keep your battery at 10% or 20% or whatever, you know, maybe around 25, 30%. You want to make sure to charge it again so it doesn't drop there. And yes, I would say that, you know, I have seen a drop in my screen on time where, you know, I, I was getting like seven hours of screen on time before. Screen on time basically is just how long I've used the phone with the screen on, screen on time. Um, but 
you know, it dropped to about, I would say, six hours, five hours, which for me, I'm still okay with. You know, I live in a country where there's electricity all the time, so I never need to worry. And also, you know, to save your battery health here, a tip here is you can go into your display. And, you know, I have it at the maximum resolution right here, which is the QHD plus resolution. But what you can do is you can actually just select um, full HD or HD plus, and that should be good enough for, you know, saving battery health as well. But again, why use or why get a phone like this that has all of these wonderful features and then limit the display to like full HD? Come on, we want to put it to the maximum, okay? So that is exactly what um, I have done here. But yes, that is how you're able to preserve your battery health in the long run. Now the S24 Ultra here has all of these wonderful cameras from that 5X camera, which is I think a 50 megapixel sensor to the 10X one to the main camera, which is a 200 megapixel camera to the ultra wide. And you know, taking advantage of using it here here, um, definitely, you know, one of the things to optimize here is in the camera settings. The first thing is I've actually changed my aspect ratio here. By default, it is three by four. But what I've noticed is that on Instagram, if you're posting, especially like me, I love posting to Instagram, um, it's going to crop in your uh, post or your story in case you're posting to your stories, which is what I'm always posting to like 99% of the time anyway. So what you want to do is actually enable nine by 16 here, which means it uses the full length of off the camera there so that any photo you post, you can always be guaranteed that it will never crop it in, right? Which is great. Another settings is to actually go into the settings right here. And what I've done is in intelligent optimization, I've selected it to maximum. So I want it to be able to like use all of the AI optimization things to be able to determine what is the best shot it would it should take. And another setting I recommend you change is auto FPS. So if you scroll down here, uh, by default, it turns it on, which means that when you are shooting in low light, for example, um, the video will automatically slow down the frame rate so that it can get in more light. But the problem with that is that it will then become like very, very like, you know, slow and you would have a lot of blur because, you know, there's not enough light, of course. I suggest you turn this off. Pronto, you do definitely do not want that on. If you're going to advanced video settings here, uh, for me, um, I've selected HEVC, which is like the newer, you know, uh, more compressed format, So you, which means you can shoot a more high quality video and it is also smaller file sizes, but you might not be able to use it in, you know, some apps or some apps might be a little bit picky, but most of the social media apps are okay actually. And I've also selected high bitrate videos here because I want it to give me the best quality. Uh, so that is another setting I have here. And 360 um, audio here so that, you know, if I have a Bluetooth device connected and the, uh, the microphone on the phone here, I want it to record everything at once, which is always nice. Now, if we keep scrolling down here, uh, we have camera assistant. And camera assistant is what? Is from our good friend, Good Luck. And if we're going to Good Luck right here, um, you can actually see camera assistant listed here. So it's one of the apps you can actually install from Good Luck to be able to customize your camera. And I have some certain uh, options here due to camera assistant. The first is auto HDR. So I want it to be able to automatically select where HDR is going to be used. So HDR is high dynamic range. So basically the darkest parts of your image, the brightest parts of your image and how the you know phone is able to intelligently like, you know, make sure that everything is always has all the best details, right? Um, picture softening, you definitely want to have that off. If not, you have that weird thing where, especially at night, because it's trying to remove the noise, um, it will make the person look like they have makeup on, which doesn't look very nice. I prefer it to be noisy, but to have sharp details as opposed to like all of that fake like softness, right? So I have that off thanks to this. Um, I also have like, you know, um, distortion correction, which means that, for example, when you are in the 0.6x camera right here, um, it will actually make sure that the edges of the camera um, are not warped in this weird way. Uh, it will automatically correct all of that. And auto lens switching, so um, depending on the scenario, for example, if let's say if I bring this here and I you know open up the camera here, um, you can actually see that it will change 
lenses real time. So for example, if I go into 1x mode, it will actually determine what mode it is. I'm not sure if I can demo it right here, but it will determine what mode it is and then it will change the uh, mode, camera mode, uh, uh, depending on whatever is in front of it. I felt like I just repeated myself there. I probably did. It's like 4.35 a.m. in the morning, but we're, keep, we're going to keep going. You must get all the tips today. So let's go back into uh, camera assistant right there. And I think that should be it. Um, there's also a quick tap shutter here. I don't have that on. Um, you can prioritize focus over speed. So for example, if you want to make sure that, you know, when you take a photo, it will always be in focus. So that means that the penalty is that the photos will not be as fast. That's another option you have there. So yeah, you have so many options. I think I also disabled the video recording in photo mode. So um, before that, let's see if I if this were enabled, which I think is the default, and you open the camera app, and when the photos app, for example, and you press and hold there, it will actually start recording a video. I do not like that. I want it to you know have like a burst mode, right? Um, so I turn that off, sorry. I'm just gonna go back there and turn it off. So I turned that off. I want it to be a burst, which means it will take like 10,000 photos when I press and hold that uh, thing there. And obviously you have like more options here, like audio monitoring, if you're going to be, you know, plugging this into a HDMI and watching it from somewhere else. I have a video planned. I'm not sure if you would want to see like other, um, you know, camera tips for the S24 Ultra specifically, but you know, let me know in the comments there and I might be able to like make something for you specifically, right? So yes, that is um, camera here on the S24 Ultra and those are the settings that I'm using. Okay, another one here is the filters. So the face one, I have everything turned off. I don't want it to be on my face. And filters here, you can actually install filters. In case you did not know, you can actually install filters from the Galaxy Store. So I have one here, which is a classic. It's a bit strong right now. So I always make sure that you know I turn it off. And one thing about the filters here, so if, if I put that there and I take a photo right there, um, it bakes it in or it looks like it's baked in. Baked in, basically, what does that mean? It means that you know it looks like as if this photo has this filter and that's all you're going to get. But that is not all, actually. So a quick tip here is that if you press on this icon here and you go into the settings and you press on this other one there, I'm just going to remove that. You press on this last thing here and I think you press on style. You can actually change it back to the original. Oh, no, this is actually the wrong setting. But this is actually a nice way to be able to show you that. I think this is um, the ability to change the style of the photo, which can be confusing, not the filter. Let's go back to the filter first. Um, so let's say if you go into this right here, which is the second thing right there, you can actually change it back to the original. So any photo you've captured with this phone here, you can actually either um, use the uh, classic filter that I use there, and as you can see, it also retains the percentage I used there, or you can just select the original right there, click on save, I'm going to click on save right there, and boom, we have it in the original. So you don't have to worry in case you take a photo with the filter and later you want to edit it and you are scared that, oh my God, you have to take another photo. You don't, quick tip. Um, so yes, that is all for the camera right here. And this will not be a complete tips video if we don't talk about this feature here of the S Pen, which really almost any phone has these days, right? Which is the S Pen. Now the S Pen right here, um, I actually disabled one of the features, right? Which um, you might not notice, but right there, see, I cannot, you know, carry out gestures with the S Pen. Now, obviously I love writing with this. In fact, this script for this video, I actually wrote it here. Like you can see that I wrote it here on the uh, S24 Ultra. Everything I've spoken about here, I wrote it here. And you know, it's what I actually used to get ideas out of my brain directly into the thing. And one of the things I like about the S Pen before I come to why I turned off the gestures and how to do that yourself is, you know, if you press on this um, right here, no, actually if we scroll there, you see this. And in case you do not know or you are new to the S24 Ultra, if you hover over the screen right there, it will actually give you a pop-up of the text on screen. So if I hover there, you can actually see it pops up there. So if I tip, tap on this icon here, you can actually align handwriting or my favorite feature, which is to convert to text. And boom, it has converted it into text. How, how brilliant is that? But that is not all. If you click on this um, AI out icon right here at the top, I'm just gonna move this. You click on that, you actually get even more options like auto format, summarize, correct your spelling or translate. 
For me, what I use the most is the auto format right here, and it will give you a, another option, right? All the options, you get all the options here, um, which is headers and bullets or meeting notes. For me, in this case, headers and bullets. So I'm going to click headers and bullets right there, and it will automatically use AI, the magic of AI, to actually look at that. Just properly format it for me very nicely. And what I can do, you can actually even select different themes right here. And as you can see, it has categorized them. It gave you different options right here. And this also changes, by the way, depending on like your the kind of color you're using on the document itself. It's really smart, which is, which is you know, very surprising for me at least, right? So from this here, now I'm able to like just click copy right here. And then I use Notion. So I just go into my Notion and, you know, when I click on what's on my S24 Ultra right here. That's how I'm able to actually paste the text here. And that's how I was able to actually come up with this script right here. So everything started in my notes app, which is brilliant. Like the ability to just, you know, get stuff out of your brain onto your uh, phone right here and then copy it later, format it all automatic and then post it in your favorite app to go. I think that is brilliant. Okay, since we are still talking about the S Pen, I just put it back into the holster right there. What you can actually do is if your screen is locked and you have an idea, you have to get it down. You don't even have to unlock your phone, right? In case you don't know, you can just remove your S Pen right there and you can just start writing. You can just start, you know, world uh, changing um, idea right there, right? Idea. And if you press and hold on the um, S Pen right there, there's a button, right? You press and hold that button, it erases, it erases right there. Uh, you know, just for the fun of it, I'm going to say like and subscribe because you really should. Like, you, like you've made it this far, come on, what are you doing, man? Come on, subscribe, please, please. It will really help me. And one thing, you, you know, when immediately you put it back there like that, boom, saved. How do you get it? When you open your notes app, um, you go back there. Um, so I'm just going to go back into my notes app. Boom, there, done. It actually also uses, you know, it uh, categorizes it according to the date and you can open it right there and you can do all of the, you know, stuff you want to do later. Like, you know, um, let, for example, if I bring out the pen again, I really love bringing out this pen. Um, it's very, very, it feels very, very nice. And for the first time, it actually is very flush with the phone. Um, I tap on that. You can actually align your handwriting. And if you click on that, it actually aligns everything. Amazing AI stuff. But yes, that is the S Pen here on the S24 Ultra. And wrapping up this video is just telling you about the game I'm playing. Well, singular game. So here you have uh, the gaming hub pre-installed here, which is sort of um, Samsung's way of giving you a way to launch all of your games. And you can find it in your uh, app drawer there by looking for gaming hub. I'm trying to look for it. Boom, there you go. Gaming hub. And I have two games installed here, but I only really play one. So I have Genshin Impact and I have Fortnite, but I pretty much only play Genshin, sorry, uh, Fortnite. I used to play Genshin Impact a lot, but I only play Fortnite. Um, and uh, I think I remember the last time I played Genshin Impact was my good friend, uh, Nasilemak Tech or NL Tech, who helped me um, play this part that I was really, um, you know, quite um, rubbish at. But yes, I play Fortnite. And if you tap on the details there, you can actually see uh, play time. You can actually see how much you play. Um, you know, what is the ranking in the Galaxy Store, which I don't care about actually. But it's nice to be able to see all of that. And I think one of the nice things here is being able to actually, I think, customize the settings here. Yeah, so you can be able to customize the settings of all the games and all of that. I've not really, as you can see, I've not really played a lot of games here. I've just mostly taken a lot of photos. But yes, that is the wrap up of what is on my Galaxy S24 Ultra, all of the tips and tricks after using this phone for almost two weeks and you know all of those little things that I think has just improved the quality of life for me when using this fantastic phone right here. And I'll be honest, I really hope this has been helpful to you, especially if you've lasted this long. Um, what are some of the tips that you learned for the first time that you did not know existed? Um, what are some of the tips you have that I did not mention in this video? Please leave them in the comments. I would also love to you know, uh, uh, see some of them. And I am making this video because I just love watching videos like this where I get to see someone else's um, way that they use the phone. It might be the same phone as me, but they just customized it in a whole different way. And yeah, sure, there are many videos on YouTube about, you know, all of the custom widgets and all of that, but 
Man, this is not like 2012 or 2013 anymore. I kind of just like a very clean, minimal interface here. And I just like it very clean. And you know, on, on first glance, it looks like as if there's nothing there, but then you look at it and it's like, it's, it's customized as heck, but it's very, you know, it's given very sleeper cell, right? Um, so again, thank you so much for watching and lasting all the way to the end. I really appreciate you. Um, you know, I've been Captain Awesome. This is Geekception. Again, like, subscribe, you know, PayPal, uh, memberships, whatever, any way you can support, I'll really appreciate it. And I really have to go to bed. Like it's like it's like 4 45 p.m. or a.m. or something. So it's really, really late here. Um, probably head to bed. That would do me a whole lot of good. But yes, I just couldn't sleep until I made this video. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you doing it. Um, I've been your captain of awesome. This is Geekception, and I'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget to stay awesome. Bye.